So, so I said uh, finite element chooses within a certain class of functions. So what is that class of functions? So for that, uh, for that to be rigorous, let me define that. Uh, the class of functions I'm choosing in the simplest case of finite element is called a, a linear function space. Okay, so linear function space is, let's call it x. x is a linear function space. Okay, if it contains functions, right, so x is a set of functions. So every element in the set x can only be a function. All right, so if, if the following is true, if the following two things are true, then I can call x a linear space. If for, for, any, for any number, so for any number a and f inside this x, for any uh, number a and f in this x. So, so I have a number and a function. A times f, which is the function multiplied by this uh, constant number a, is also inside this x. So this is part of linearity, right? So if I scale the function by a factor of 2, the function is no longer in that space. That means it's not a linear space. So, so, so this is the first criterion. The second criterion is for any f and g both within the linear space. f plus g has to be also in that linear space. So these are basically the two criteria for linearity. And of course, uh, if you go to uh, Wikipedia, look for the definition of a linear space, it also includes any other things that are obvious for functions, right? For example, uh, a times b times f uh, is equal to a times parenthesis b times f. I mean, all of these are, are, are true by default for a function space, for, for space of functions. Okay, and for, for example, f plus g equal to g plus f. These are, these are things that are, for functions, they, these are true by default. All right, so this is what a linear space is. And for finite element to work, we also need what's called a basis of, a, of this function space. So, so basis is a concept that works only for linear space. And uh, for a linear function space, the basis is going to be a subset of this linear function space. So, so now let's define a basis. Right. So B, a subset of X, is a basis if, uh, if we also get two conditions, right? So the first condition is linear independence. So what does linear independence mean? It means that if I, if I choose any finite number of elements in this basis, so, so that means, so for any f1, f2, etc., fn, all of them are inside this basis, okay? You cannot express fn, you cannot express any of these functions in the ba basis as a1, f1 plus a2, f2 plus etc. a n minus 1, f n minus 1. Uh, it, this is true uh, if and only if, uh, well this cannot be true forever, right? Uh, you cannot, uh, there, there cannot, there can not be a set of a1 to a n minus 1 such that this is true. So you cannot express any member of the basis as a linear combination of any other basis. But it is, this basis is sufficient to express any other element as a linear combination. So that is, uh, uh, it spans the, the B 
spans x. That is saying that uh, for any f inside this x, there always exists f1, etc., to fn inside this b, while n can be any number, right? So, uh, so that f is equal to f1 plus, uh, plus a2, f2 plus, etc., plus a n, f n. All right, so, so basically what this is saying is that, first of all, b spans the whole space. That means for any function in the space, I can represent it as a linear combination of these basis functions. And two is B is the minimum set, right? B cannot be reduced further because uh, if it can be reduced further, that means I can remove one element from B and still have the spanning property. That means that removed element actually can be expressed as a linear combination of the remaining elements. That does not satisfy the linear independence property. So, so a basis is like the minimum spanning set of a linear function space. Right, does it make sense? So, so the, the linearity of the function space and the basis essentially enables us to represent any function f inside the space x using a bunch of numbers, right? So if we have a space and if we have a basis, then for any function f, that f is uniquely identified by a1, a2, etc. to a n. All right? So this is a way to represent functions using numbers. I mean, computers cannot really store functions because functions are essentially infinite dimensional. But computers are good at storing numbers. So this is a way to replace a function with a, a bunch of numbers. OK, it's especially convenient if b is finite dimensional. I mean, if b, b is a finite set. And uh, when b is a finite set, we call x a finite dimensional space. OK, so if there exists a basis b with a finite number of elements, let's say with n elements, with n functions, with n functions in it. And these functions are called basis functions in it. Then um, the linear space which for which B serves as a basis is called uh, n-dimensional. That's a way to define the dimension of a function space. All right. OK, so we have been talking about uh, pretty uh, abstract mathematics. Let's, let's nail down to a solid example. All right. So a solid example is, uh, let's look at the interval 0 to 1, OK? And let's look at all functions that looks like a straight line inside this interval. Can somebody tell me, is that a linear space? All functions that are straight with constant derivatives. Look at the properties, right? <clears throat> if I have f being a straight line, if I multiply it, it's still a straight line. If I have two functions, both are have constant derivatives, I add them, it has a constant derivative. So this space, okay, the, the space of functions with constant derivatives is a linear space. Somebody tell me what is the dimension of this space? One. One? How do you figure out? Why is it one? Uh, well, you can get any, uh, or maybe two if you put the one here. OK. If you want to know the dimension of a space, try to construct a basis. There is a theorem saying that if you have a basis of n elements, then 
look at any other bases, it'll still have any elements. You can't uh, have two different bases with a different number of elements. Uh, we won't prove it here, but that's true. So this is a two-dimensional space because I can construct a two basis functions, right? For example, I can construct a basis function that that is uh, that is uh, okay. So one zero one zero. I ha I can have a function that goes like this. I can have another function that goes like this, right? A function that is equal to minus one minus x, and uh, another function that is equal to x. So, for whatever straight line function I have, I can have f at zero times one minus x plus f at one times x, right? I have the function. So, so whatever f of x would be equal to f0 times 1 minus x plus f1 times x, right? So basically things cancel out and I, I have that function. I mean, as long as that function is a, is, a, is a function of constant slope, then this is always true. Of course, I can construct a different basis. I can have the two elements being the first uh, element in the basis is just a constant is equal to 1, the second element being just the x, then I can also uh, I can also do the same thing, right? But this kind of uh, functions is uh, what we will see is more natural with finite element because, uh, because of exactly th this property, because uh, the, the numbers the linear combination coefficients is actually going to be the value of the function at particular points. All right. Okay. So, so this is an example of a linear space. And again, the idea of finite element is to look over, look for, for an arbitrary function, look for a function inside a finite dimensional linear function space that is as close to that function as possible. 